Now, motion in one dimension. Today, we are going to have this first chapter of mine. Here, we are seeing two objects. One is called as the static object. One is called as the dynamic object. Dynamic object has two parts, which we will read. Kinematics and dynamics. We will focus on the kinematics. In this motion in one dimension, dynamic object, as I told you earlier, having the two parts, kinematics and dynamics. Kinematics is the study about the object due to the external force applied on it. And dynamics is study about the objects due to an internal force of its own. Now, motion in one dimension. Chapter, we have to know few important things which are very important for us and the other point object point object has no dimension and a condition of rest condition of rest when there is no change of the position with respect to its surroundings the body is said to be always in rest and body is said to be in a condition of motion when it changes its position with respect to its surroundings now kinematic motion has the multiple dimensional motions such as number one zero dimension motion example a point who has no dim dimensions second is the one dimensional motion example a straight line motion a motion of a car on a straight road two dimensional motion example is a motion in any two axes either x or y or y or z or z or x here we are watching a football player is kicking a ball and the ball is moving in the two axes when it gain gaining height it is going on the y axis and when the football is going forward it is the x axis in the three dimensional motion we are having few examples like kite birds the birds we have seen that birds can go right left top bottom up down everywhere so this is called as the three dimensional motion now we will study about the distance and the displacement we are taking your school and your college as an example for the distance and for displacement also we are taking a school and your house as an example from point a to the b b to the c c to the d d to the e the total length of the path in the case of the distance is a b plus b c plus c d plus c e this is total length of the path which is called as the distance traveled by you but when we move with the same path a b plus b c plus c d plus d e the initial and the final position is a and e so, the length between the A and E is the shortest possible path we can study. And this shortest possible path is known as the displacement. As it has direction from A to E, so this is having a vector quantity. And distance was not having any direction because you can go anywhere. A to B has no direction. B to C, no direction. I have not said anything about the direction. So, this is called the distance, which is a scalar quantity. Now, the displacement is having a direction associated with the vector quantity. Very soon, distance never decreases with time, so it is always positive in nature. Because once you will move forward, you can never come back. If you come back, we will count it too. And so that time, it is always said to be positive. And the displacement can decrease with time, so it may also have the negative in nature. Because, positive because when you are moving forward, negative when you are coming backward. At that time, it is said to be negative. And when we go, between the differences distance and displacement we have seen that the distance is a scalar quantity I just told you and displacement is a vector quantity distance travel the actual path length and the displacement the shortest path length distance is always equal to or is smaller than displacement but the displacement is always equal to or greater than the distance distance is not having a unique path the displacement is a unique path Distance tells us about the type of the path is that followed, but displacement never tells us the type of the path because we don't know from which direction we have already moved from the starting to middle, middle to the next three fourth and three fourth to the final. So, distance never decreases with time. As I told you earlier, this is always positive in nature. Displacement can decrease with time because this is having both the positive and the negative values, both having the similar th 
properties, they are the same unit. Distance and the displacement. They both are having the same unit, meter per second. And displacement, sorry, distance is having the same unit and that is meter. Displacement is also described as a unit meter. Now, using both distance and the displacement, we are going forward in the next topic that is the speed of an object. The speed of an object is the magnitude of the change of the its position. It is thus a scalar quantity. Its formula is speed is equal to distance upon time. Its SI unit in meter per second or we will better write it meter second minus one. Common symbol is a small v. A speed having the two parts, uniform speed and non-uniform speed. Uniform speed, if an object covers equal distance in equal interval of time, it is called the uniform speed. And non-uniform speed, we know that if the body, the speed of the body is changing with respect to time. And what is the average speed? Non-uniform speed has been divided or categorized into two parts, that is the average speed and instantaneous speed. Average speed is calculated by dividing the total distance, total distance travel that sometimes has traveled by the nature and the total amount of the time it has taken to travel that distance. So the average speed is called total distance upon total time. I have given a video lecture. There I have told you about the instantaneous speed. I have described it pretty, pretty in a good manner. Is the speed of an object at a particular motion or the particular moment of time. That is called the instantaneous speed. We saw it by the delta S upon delta T or ds by dt. This is the instantaneous speed. Now, velocity. As I have taken under consideration the speed in the previous few moments before, now I am telling about it to be velocity. It is defined as a vector measurement of the rate of the change of direction of a motion. Simply, the velocity is the speed at which something, something moves in one direction. Its SI unit is the same as the speed, meter per second, or miles per hour, or foot per second, but we don't need to know about that. Velocity also been categorized in two forms, uniform velocity and non-uniform velocity. Uniform you know if the object covers equal distance in equal interval of time. And non-uniform velocity, the velocity of the direction of the body is changing with respect to time. Again, similarly like the speed it has having the two parts, non-uniform velocity is categorized into two parts, which is the average velocity is calculated by dividing the total distance that some something has traveled by a total amount of time. Average velocity, total displacement upon total time and instantaneous velocity the same as the particular moment of time that is the ds by dt. Now friends, we will differentiate speed and velocity. Speed is scalar and the velocity is vector because velocity is having a value of the displacement and speed is having a value of the distance. Rate of change of distance is called speed and rate of change of displacement is called velocity. Third part is the velocity without direction. Speed is always with direction. Now, have no special case. Velocity has a special case. Never decreases with time speed. Velocity can decrease with time. Speed can never be negative, it is always positive. Velocity can be negative, zero or positive. They both are having the same units. Now, we know that the after the speed and velocity, we go over to the next unit and that is the acceleration and retardation. Acceleration is the rate of the change of the velocity of an object with respect to time. Acceleration also the velo vector quantities because it is having direction because we are using velocity in the acceleration. So acceleration is equal to velocity upon time or meter per second is square or ms minus 2. Retardation, the negative value, as I told you earlier that the velocity has the negative value, positive, negative or the zero. So retardation is being used because we have considered the value of velocity as a negative value. The negative acceleration is called the retardation or deacceleration. So negative acceleration is called retardation or deacceleration. If the body, if the velocity of a body is decreasing with respect to time, the acceleration is said to be negative as you are watching in this diagram. The ball is rolling upward as it is reaching up to the topest position of this slant angle, then it will have its velocity zero. It means its velocity is constantly decreasing. So the acceleration is also decreasing. So this is a good, uh, very good example of retardation. Type of acceleration are also two, uniform acceleration. If the equal change in velocity in equal interval of time is the uniform, uniform acceleration. And variable acceleration is the unequal change in velocity in 
unequal interval of time or unequal change in velocity in equal interval of time, the final either the denominator or the numerator value is same. So this is called as the uniform and the variable velocity. Now the motion motion in one dimension has a graph graph for the uniform and the non-uniform motion. A graph is a line is straight to or curved showing the relation of two variable quantities. Always show the relation between the two variable quantities. You are, as you are watching, I have made these graphs, position and time graph. Its origin is being shown by zero or O. And next thing is its y-axis and x-axis. Position time graph, there are the four different graphs we are watching. One is a straight line parallel to the time axis or x axis or horizontal axis. Second graph is it is showing the first graph is showing about the stationary object because the position is same at every time. Second graph is the uniform velocity which is moving upward in a particular angle. Third graph is also uniform velocity because it is going downward. So in the first graph it is body is increasing its velocity in the second graph it is decreasing its velocity. Third part part of the graph is the uniform acceleration means it is a kind of parabola of the graph which is I have drawn it in the y-axis. Now, now the velocity time graph first was the distance time graph now the velocity. Now we will take velocity in the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So we have made the four different type of the velocity time graphs. First graph is the parallel to the horizontal axis, second is the moving upward, third is moving downward and the fourth is not starting from origin. It is starting somewhere upward on the y-axis. So the first graph you say the area under the velocity time graph which I have shown you by the blue rectangle that gives the distance traveled by the body. And upward slope in the second graph gives the uniform acceleration and downward slope in the third graph is the uniform deacceleration or retardation and the fourth graph so the, if the motion does not start from origin and but it is accelerating uniform acceleration that is called as the fourth graph now acceleration time graph i have made three graphs when the graph is drawn between the accelerating body and the time it is called as the acceleration time graph in the first graph a stationary body in the uniform motion the graph in the acceleration is taken on the y axis and the time is taken on the x axis here in the blue line show you that the body object is at the zero position means acceleration is zero means its uniform velocity in the uniform velocity acceleration is zero but the time is increasing constantly so the first graph in the blue line on directly on the x-axis in the second graph constant negative velocity and the constant positive velocity I have shown if on the upper side of the origin on the positive y-axis constant positive velocity where the slope is zero and the downward of the origin in you know, a time graph there is a negative y-axis and the slope is again zero this is the constant negative velocity because it's the negative axis in the third graph we are saying the constant acceleration that is the moving upward this may depend on the acceleration the value of the yeah, magnitude of the acceleration depends uh, the angle which is made between the constant acceleration graph and the x-axis. Now, as I have told you earlier to equation of uniform accelerated motion, they are having the three constant uh, um, equations. They are v is equal to u plus at, v square is equal to u square plus 2 as and s is equal to ut plus half at square as we, are, we will derive a is equal to v minus u upon t. Now we will cross multiply v minus u is equal to at and rearrange v is equal to u plus at. In the second equation, v square is equal to u square plus 2as, a is equal to acceleration is equal to change in velocity, v minus u upon t. So the t, we will make the framing of formula and change the position of t and a. t is equal to v minus u upon a and the distance average is equal to um, the given value and now at the distance, we will put these values of a and t at the respected places on solving we get v square is equal to u square plus 2s in s is equal to ut plus half at square average, average velocity we know that sum of both the velocity divided by 2 is called the average velocity u initial velocity plus v final velocity divided by 2 s is equal to velocity into time because distance is displacement is given by this velocity average into time putting the value of velocity average over here s is equal to v u plus v upon 2 is into 
t. So now place the value of the first equation v squared u plus at at the place of v, we will get u plus u plus at upon 2 into t. On solving, we get s squared to ut plus half at square. Like this, my friend, you have seen all the chapter and hope uh, you will understand it. Very soon, I will give you its uh, uh, notes also. You can log into my website www.targetexams.com or you can subscribe our YouTube channel where I will constantly teach you other subjects like uh, mathematics, chemistry, biology and whatever subject you will demand on my mobile number. I have given my mobile number in my YouTube channel. There you can find it out very easily. So stay fit, stay safe in this lockdown period. Thank you so much for hearing me carefully and understanding this chapter. Thank you.